So you know what my biggest issue is with Wes Clark leaving? It's that he posted on Instagram. Or sorry, I think it was Twitter. It was an Instagram clip. But it's a quote I love and that I've been using. The quote is, don't eat with people you wouldn't starve with. It's a fire line. It's, it's what an Instagram caption for you when you're on a trip with the fellas, you know? You had a cottage weekend, you do the boys photo, and you do don't eat with people you wouldn't starve with. You had a dinner. Woo! That's a, that's a hot caption. That's getting some likes. It's getting some traction. And he ruined that for me forever, Wes Clark. Can't believe he did it. But also, when you post that, and you're taking a new job, and you're taking it with your old boy, kind of implies that you wouldn't starve with the organization, with the guys that were with the organization that you just left. It's a bit of a weird one. James Myrtle, Senior Managing Editor at The Athletic. What's up, brother? How are we doing? <laughs> that was a good little start. I like the intro. Thank you. Little, yeah. Thank I, don't you. Think it Im- I don't think it implies that. I think it's pretty clear what it's saying. What is it saying, <laughs> then, to you? Wait, it's art. It's art. It's art. What does it say to you? Let's, we're at the art gallery looking at Wes Clark's Twitter. What does the painting say to you? It's saying he doesn't want to eat or starve here. Yeah. <laughs> he would rather do it in Pittsburgh. Yes. And, you know, I, it, it's interesting too, because like you can interpret it a few ways, I guess. Uh, you know, there's probably going to be some starving in Pittsburgh coming up. Oh yeah. You know? Like, like they're not going to be, they're not going to be eating out of the right. Stanley cup anytime soon. So, you know, it's, it, it's choosing to go where it's going to be difficult with someone who he wants to work with as opposed to stay somewhere where the grass is greener right now. But, I don't think he wants to be here. That's okay. how I that's how I interpret that. I, and I don't know that there's another way to interpret it. No, uh, I, I want to get into that in a second, but I just want to say, I got a theory about Wes Clark now that I would like to say. He's going to Pittsburgh. What does Pittsburgh have? No draft picks. What does Kyle Dewis do? Trades all his draft picks all the time. This guy loves his job. He's like, yeah, I get three, I get a couple picks a year or I get a billion, gonna six picks, and seven. Oh, they're going to, they're going to get picks. Yeah. Yeah. Like, but as coming. of right now, as of right now, all he's going to do is like oh. show up at every draft. They're like, get one thing, no. get a halfway decent development guy. And he's like, wow, I did my job. Thank you. One pick every couple of years. Wes Clark, he nailed it. All right. You're the man. You're the guy. Go to the newest yeah, team but... where there's no picks. He's going to trade them all away as soon as they're good. You're telling me Sid's going to sign that contract extension. They're going to be sitting on draft picks. Well, I mean, they just like that Kevin Hayes deal. They just made that to get the second round pick. Like this is, there's going to be a rebuild there mm. at some point some under point. Kyle Dubas and we'll see when it starts. Yeah. Uh, okay. So why the, uh, contentiousness because you and I both know this, this was out here for a little while before he left that, that, that was it, that that was his last draft. Yeah. Yeah. I had heard that quite a while ago. Right. But why did it, why was it this way? Because, okay, this is the thing. Um, Spezza left right away and yes, tree living couldn't be on the, the draft floor the very first year, but why do the extra year? If this guy was so clearly in camp Dubas, like that, he was a Dubas defector. Like why did they wait so long? The uh, a bunch of uh, I, I I'm pretty sure we talked about this last year. The why there wasn't the mass defection last year is that there were a bunch of people that were under contract yeah. that the Leafs didn't want to leave. So you know the West Clark ran his contract out and then left. Yeah. So, but I, I just don't understand why you would want a guy in the building. You would want to continue to develop. You know your your draft room around a guy that you knew that the end of his contract was going to be Gonzo. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it, how much of the front office can you turn over on the short notice that they had last year no, to no, change no. things around? Last year is fine. The Easton Cowan draft is completely understandable. What I'm saying I don't really get is that after that draft and then going into this season, why they wouldn't have already put somebody else in place and said, yeah, we're well, we're not going to continue the rest of this contract. We know you don't want to be here. Like it's it. If it, it's this obvious that he's tweeting that out, well, I think like, there was a transition though, JD. Yeah. It just wasn't a public one. Okay. Like I think that they knew he was, you know, I mean, they there was probably. Do you want a contract extension? No. Yeah. It's like okay, well, let's okay. lean in on our people. You know, yeah. like, I don't, I don't know that for sure, but I, I mean, that's the way it would work. Yeah. You know, like they would go to him and say, "Great job, we like you. Do you want to stay?" And he'd say no, and then they'd be like, "Okay, we're going to start leaning on our people." So, the hard thing with, and I know we're probably going to get into it. The hard thing with picking out, you know, who's responsible for drafts is, you know, like who's, I don't know who, who's making the pick at the end of the day, you know, every time, like, no, 
how many drafts was Wes Clark actually in charge of the board? I mean, he was only director of amateur scouting for maybe three years. So Mm -hmm. this latest draft, I don't even know if like they were all his guys. Yeah. Um, it would, I, I did, I will tell you this though, is that as, as excited as I am for the pick, I'm not moving off of it. It's an Oshawa kid who uses heavy machinery. Like uh, I'm into the pick Ben Danford behind it. I did think like now this guy's gone and his whole thing was that it was the reach of the draft. <laughs> you know, they could have got him in the late second round or in the even third, according to some people. And then one person described this draft to me as lazy. Uh, that I went, oh, well, I'm not feeling as good about it when the guy departs uh, that, that you're as, as thrilled about the draft. So I'm hoping that he wasn't uh, the man behind all of the picks. Um, yeah, I, I don't know how many he's behind either. I do know that, you know, he's been a part of this thing since 2018. And uh, yeah, if you go through it, which I did, um, it's, all, it's, it's all right. Like, again, who knows who's making what picks and who knows who's what. But if you go back, um, yeah, 2019, they didn't have a first. And they, they had six picks. They end up with, uh, he, he wasn't, he wasn't the director of scouting though, right? Yeah, like he I mean. was just one member. He was someone on the staff for sure. So, but I would imagine yeah. though, that when you get promoted like that, usually it is, you have a pretty strong voice in the room and that you're the guy yeah. that's responsible for being like part of the success, right? He was assistant of player personnel or something like that. Yes. I think that was the role before. So yeah. that's what I'm saying. though. was like 2020, they had 12 picks. Um, and that's the Rodion Amarov draft. So you give them some reprieve on their first round pick, obviously, but it's had no NHL players out of 12 picks. Their best one is Topi Niemela, third rounder who I've been told is a best of third pairing guy. 2021, they did pretty well. You know, they had no first and they got Matthew Nyes. 2022, five picks, no first. They get Minton who, and again, I know that some of these guys that are not in the NHL and it takes a while to, to judge these drafts. But I will say that you can kind of draft them in the moment from this standpoint is like, what is the value of the player now? Right. And right now, last year, we knew that Frazier Minton was not extremely highly coveted out of all their drafts. They kind of nailed one pick, which is nice. And then now the pick that is count, I think Minton is a nail. If you get that in the second round, a guy that people do think is going to be an everyday two way center that can play on your third line. I do think that's a good pick, but yeah, it's like that. The the morning that was happening here and like the idea that this was like a a major loss, I liked Wes Clark. I think that he did a fine job with the picks that he had. If you do give him a lot of credit for 2018, they made nine picks and picked three NHLers. First round Sandine, second round Dursey, which looks like a really good pick. And then Holmberg um, was a sixth round Mm. pick and he's an NHLer. So it's like... He had some other good late picks that you missed though. Like Hilda B in the fourth round looks like a really good pick. No. But yeah, fourth I mean, round, fourth I guess. round pick a couple years ago, Grabenkin is mm. already signed to an NHL deal. He had 41 points at yeah. 21 years old in the KHL last year. I've got like mixed he's, reviews on the ceiling of that guy though. Yeah. Well, maybe, but he's yeah. a fifth round pick and sure. he's already signed an NHL deal and he's coming over. So like, I mean, that's a good pick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's fine. I guess that, that is those, I'll give you those two picks and yeah, he'll be is big. That's what I know about him. He's big and he's promising, <laughs> I guess. Like you're, <laughs> We're hoping, uh, we're very much open, but okay. Th- this is the next one though. So this happened at the end of the contract. And now we've seen the Dubas defectors be the guys you would expect, right? Which is Spezza right away. Now it's his guy that runs drafts. Okay. Is there another domino to fall here? Eventually does Brandon Pridham leave the Toronto Maple Leafs and end up with the no. Pittsburgh, you know, okay. I, I heard Pridham wants to stay here. I heard he, he's a Toronto guy and wants to be here. So that, that, that wasn't in the cards. That's at least the last I heard is that that was not happening and that he's happy in the role he's in. So I don't think people have to, I, I don't know. I didn't haven't gone deeper into the staff. If there's yeah. other people that are going to go, it, I, it wouldn't shock me, but you know, I, I guess we'll see. Yeah. No, well, it's just when, when you're looking at it now, it's like it's getting to be pretty clear. Like the the remnants of Dubas's structure are starting to get yeah, a yeah. weaned out here. Yeah, his coach yeah. is gone. But his yeah, his there like, still are people. There's still yeah. you know like you know, and there were people that I talked to yesterday that were upset that Wes Clark was leaving and thought it was going to be a big loss for them. So yeah. you know, there's it's. Last year, it was a very divided front office because you had so many people that were loyal to Dubas and didn't like the way that it went down last year. And you're right, like more and more, you know, Trey Living's been bringing in his people and it's becoming, you know, Derek Clancy and Shane Doan and, mm-hmm. you know, the, the the coach and the coaching staff and it's starting to turn over. And that's usually the way that it works. It doesn't always end as acrimoniously as it did with the, the Shanahan Dubas situation, but 
I don't think it's I don't think it's a huge problem. They just they need no. to find good people to replace the ones that are leaving. Here's the th- here's my thought on this as well. Um, you better be able to find somebody good when you're the Toronto Maple Leafs, okay? Yeah. Like you got yeah. all more money than God. This is the kind of area where there's absolutely no excuse for you to not have the best of the best. So my question so here, what did Tampa or Anaheim, which have been the two best drafting teams the last 10, Dallas, 12 years and, and yeah, or Dallas and, and take their yeah. head scout. That's, you know, that's what I'm saying. So do you think that that's what they do now or that again, it's very early, right? This just happened. I'm kind of ambushing you with this. I was like, what's happening? <laughs> Get on here. But what do you think they do? Is this a, they go out and do an external hire? Or do you think that there's someone already in the building that they're like, no, 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 we're turning to this person. Uh, I don't, I don't honestly, I don't know at this yeah, point, okay. but I mean, they have a lot of time and they also, they have no picks next year. So, yeah. you know, they can, they, they, they acquired a second round yeah, pick That's it. and, and they have a fifth and a sixth yeah. round pick. So, yeah. you know, it's not like, why a, would you want to come here? <laughs> <They're> like, <laughs> Hey, we want to pluck you from Dallas. He goes, okay. Um, I got to sell my mansion. Uh, I got to, you know, leave this beautiful tax-free state where the climate is nice. I got to come up there. They're like, yeah, yeah, no, it's great. You'll be able to get uh, a condo. Uh, it's uh, 600 square feet. Uh, it's cost the same as your mansion. He's like, okay, um, and what will I be doing for work? What will I take pride in? You go, no, oh, you're not going to believe it. We've got a second, and we're probably going to trade it <laughs> as soon as the deadline comes around. It's going to be on every single trade list uh, that every single insider <laughs> has in the business. <laughs> but boy, oh boy, someday, buddy, you might get to make a pick. you got to get up here. Well, the one thing they have working for them is a lot of the people around the league are from Ontario and want to be here, sure. right? Like, you yeah. know, and I think that that's, that's nice. one of the, that's one of the pull factors for people like Britham and other yeah. people that they would want. And, and, and it's a, it's a marquee organization and you're right. The pay is going to be better. And so they should be able to get someone good. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> get your quants, get your analytics yeah. team to look at all of the drafts in the last six years and who did the best and then just go hire that person. Mm. You know, I'd rather do instead of the analytics team, I'd rather pull the executives around the league and go like, who's the most respected guy? Who do you <laughs> think is the, who do you think is the man? I don't and, think they're going to help you out with that. Yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> I thought that was tree living's whole thing. Everybody likes him. Everybody tells him the truth. They do. Yeah. That's they what do. I mean. Yeah. But so, I don't think they want him to steal their people. <laughs> no, I don't think they do either, which is kind of a bit of a bummer because I really do want them to, to steal the people. Okay. Here's the, here's the last part of this. Um, you, how involved do you think Shanahan is in this though now? Like when they were talking about hiring staffs and getting guys in here, he's the president. So you would think that this would be under his purview because obviously, and yet when we're talking about like, Hey, there's some awkwardness of having guys from an old regime. Like, I, I think that reason as crazy as it is, even though we've go through this every single year where we're like, clearly this has to be the year where there's some accountability. It's like, no, but now there is at least a track record of walking guys to the end of their contracts and then letting them go like this West Clark situation. And, maybe that's what's going to happen with Shanahan. And I would say that uh, on a balance of probability, that is what's going to happen moving forward. So yeah. Have you gotten any sense of how involved he gets to be with decision-making like this? I think that increasingly this is tree living's team right. and his decision. So that's, you know, I mean, no one's going to say it outright, but he's the tree living has a lot of sway and a lot Ooh. of power. And I think that his star is rising in the organization. So Which flat out, it should be. Like, you know, that's, this is the, uh, at this point, like, again, I, I think that I share the disappointment that a lot, a lot, a lot of the fan base does right now, which is that it's almost like, I, you hate to say it's stunning because it's just, they do this every single year, but I am genuinely stunned that it's just Shanahan and Marner will both be returning and that, you know, we're doing things like, Hey, maybe David camp will get uh, traded and that this is falling on. Like I, I keep seeing tweets about camp and yarn crocs playoff production and I'm going, yeah, they don't make that much money. So fine. Well, and but, I don't think people want them either. Like, no. what do you, you uh, some of the trade suggestions I see make no sense. Like no. you're not going to get difference makers for, I mean, you no. could free up some cap space, but sure. then I don't know what you're using it on. And it's not, you're right. It's not that much money. No, it's not that much money. There's not any really free agents left of any kind of impact. No. Uh, and so you're not getting anything for those players. Camp even has a modified no move clause. So, you know, I, I just, yeah. What, what is yarn croak worth to an organization that is going to be better than yarn croak? Like I, I, I'm failing to see it. So yeah, when people keep telling me, just wait, just wait, just wait. I'm going, sure. I, I don't, I, here's what I'm going to predict is, well, one is that, you know, you're going on vacation, so we won't have chats, but 
I don't think I'll be having a lot of, oh my God, chats, you're not going to regret being on your trip and wondering how you're going to podcast from England uh, or sorry, Denmark, when uh, we're going over the next month. Anyways, uh, James Myrtle, Senior Managing Editor at The Athletic. Thanks as always for making time, brother. Okay. Thanks, JD. See you, pal.